One year ago I made a video about choosing between 14 inch laptops and 15.6 inch laptops and that video got a lot of views but I made some conclusions in this video that I really think don't hold true now as we're going into 2021. So I wanted to make a remake of this video and talk about what should you think about if you are choosing between a 14 inch laptop and a 15.6 inch laptop today. I'm W2Best and I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials and if you like this video after watching it I would be super happy if you wanted to put a like on the video and also maybe subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications that give me a ton of motivations to bring out new videos moving forward in 2021. If you want to communicate with me you can do so either here in the comment section below or on Instagram where I'm also W2Best. Any products that I mention in this video I will link to in the description below. This video is also part of a series where I will go through different choices that you have to make when you are going to buy a laptop because there are so many choices you have to make when looking out for a laptop. This video will be in two parts where the first part will be the actual size comparison between a 14 inch laptop and a 15.6 inch laptop. And after that we will go into more of a discussion part where we will look at what are the other things you need to keep in mind when you're choosing between these two sizes. The laptops I'm comparing today is a 15 inch Dell Inspiron 15 7000 and a 14 inch Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. Here you can see a side by side comparison of the screen sizes of a 14 inch laptop and a 15 inch laptop. Both these laptops have similar sized bezels around the corners here, so it's a fair comparison between 14 and 15 inches. The 15 inch laptop measures a length of 35.5 centimeters and a height of 23.5 centimeters. While the 14 inch laptop measures 32 centimeters length and 20 and a half centimeters height. Closing the laptops up so you can see the size difference side by side as well as with the 14 inch laptop on top of the 15 inch. In terms of thickness you can see that it also differs quite a bit although it's not a giant difference between these two models. This 15 inch laptop including an extra SSD and an extra RAM stick weighs 1776 grams. Adding on the original 130 watt power brick that comes with it takes the weight to 2294 grams. This 14 inch laptop weighs 1341 grams. Adding on the original 65 watt power adapter brings the total weight to 1662 grams. As you could see while the weight didn't differ that much between the actual units as soon as you add on the power brake weight, the 15 inch laptop weighs considerably more than the 14 incher. However, in this case, this 15 inch laptop is enabled for USB-C charging. So you could actually take this 65 watt charger and use that to charge the 15 inch laptop. So make sure you look out for laptops that are compatible with USB-C charging, even if you get one that has a bit of a larger power brick in the box. When you are choosing between 14 and 15 inch laptops it's not only the actual size of the screen that matters. Another thing that could really matter is the resolution of the screen that you're going for. Today some manufacturers still put less than full HD resolution in their panels in the laptops. Full HD is 1080p vertically and anything lower than 1080p you don't want to go for. The other choices you have are Full HD, Quad HD and 4K. Full HD is the regular resolution for most laptops. It is also the least power hungry resolution so it draws less battery than the higher resolution monitors will do in your laptop. For most use cases it will be fine to use a Full HD monitor. I have Full HD monitors both in my 14 and 15 inch laptops and it works really fine for almost all of my use cases. 
However, if you are doing really advanced photo editing or video editing in higher resolutions, I would recommend that you get a higher resolution panel. For example, then a Quad HD or a 4K panel, but just keep that in mind when you're making these choices. Another thing that is important to keep in mind here is the refresh rate of the monitor. So if you are choosing a monitor that you want to be possible to game on and have a really good gaming experience on, the refresh rate can actually matter quite a lot. While the regular refresh rate on monitors today is 60 Hz, you can find monitors that have 144 Hz or even higher than that. But I would say that any normal user that is not a kind of high level mobile gamer will be fine with a 60 Hz monitor, although stepping it up might lead to a bit of a smoother experience in everyday use of the laptop as well. In the 14 inch form factor, I only know about two laptops with a higher refresh rate. These are Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro that has a 90 Hz refresh rate. And it is the Asus Zephyrus G14 that has a 120 Hz refresh rate, at least as an option for available monitors. However, if you go for a 15 inch laptop, you have a plethora of options for laptops with higher refresh rate screens. And these go from 120 to 144 and even 260 and sometimes 300, I think. So you have a really big variety of choices there when it comes to refresh rate. If you are gaming a lot on the go, I would say still that a 15 inch laptop usually makes more sense than a 14 inch laptop, mainly because of that thing with the screen. One of the last things to look out for in the monitors is the aspect ratio. And the aspect ratio is the ratio between the length of the monitor and the height of the monitor. And this video and a regular monitor is 16 by 9. But you can also get a bit more height up here. For example, in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio or 3 by 2 aspect ratio. And if your main use case for your laptop is not consuming content or playing video games, I would say that you can make pretty good use of that extra height. For example, if you're just browsing, reading texts or typing documents or programming, a higher screen is a really good thing to have. The Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio in a 14 inch form factor and the Huawei MateBook 14 has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, so even a bit higher than that. One of the things I mentioned as a big difference between 14 and 15 inch laptops in that last video I made was that you can't get a numpad in the keyboard area when you are selecting a 14 inch laptop. And this still holds true to a point. But if you are going for an ASUS laptop, you can get a numpad that is integrated in the trackpad. I was trying the ASUS ZenBook 14 earlier in 2020, and this one has this built-in numpad in the trackpad. And I must say that I really enjoy having it there. This means when you are using it, for example, with an external mouse, you can just use the external mouse, and then you have a numpad always available in the trackpad area. Of course, those are not physical buttons, but they still work pretty well for typing out numbers. However, this means you can only get an ASUS laptop. So you have really limited choices when it comes to a 14 inch laptop with a numerical keypad in it. Another major thing that I said that I stand corrected in in my last video was that if you want a powerful laptop with a powerful CPU and GPU, you are much better to go for a 15 inch laptop. And this has changed quite a lot during 2020. Just a tiny bit after I released that video, Asus released their Zephyrus G14, which is just that a 14 inch laptop with a powerful CPU and a powerful GTX GPU. It is perfect 
for any heavy video editing or heavy games that you want to play, it will really pull loads that laptop. So I would really recommend looking into it if you want an as powerful 14 inch laptop as possible. Just watch out that it doesn't come with a webcam. But also during 2020, AMD released their 4000 series CPUs, which actually make a huge difference in how powerful 14 inch laptops can be now in 2021. And soon AMD will release their 5000 series. So if you're not in a hurry, you might stay tuned for the 5000 series and get even more power in a mobile form factor. But the 4500U, the 4700U and the 4800U, as well as some of the high powered ones like the 4600H and the 4800H are really powerful CPUs that still sit in some 14 inch laptops. In 2020, Intel also released their 11th generation Tiger Lake CPUs. For example, the 1135G7, 1165G7, 1185G7, and the most complicated naming scheme that has ever been in a CPU brand so far. But nonetheless, these are really powerful and they have some powerful graphics called XE that can really drive some games and provide some power for using, for example, for video editing. So in 2021, this means you can actually get a 14 inch laptop with a really high power specification. Some examples here are the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 with the 4800U processor, the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro with the 4900H processor, and the Huawei MateBook 14 with the 4600H or 4800H CPU, as well as of course the Zephyrus G14 that I just mentioned before. In the 15 inch form factor, there is really no lack of powerful laptops and you can get anything from a media specific device with a really powerful GPU and CPU to a gaming laptop with also really powerful CPU and GPU as well as with a high refresh rate screen. Another thing where I also stand corrected is around upgradability, where I said that in most laptops in the 14 inch form factor, you can't upgrade the RAM and you can't add a second SSD. So you're stuck with using one SSD. Especially Lenovo this year has released a plethora of laptops where you have the option to add in another SSD. But also Dell has just released their new Inspiron 14 series where you can also add in a second SSD. So this is a really good change where you could actually quite easily move your storage capabilities of a 14 inch laptop up to over two terabytes, up to even four terabytes or more if you want to. Just if you're willing to spend a bit of extra money to buy those extra SSDs to put into your laptop, you can get a really big storage 14 inch laptop. Still today, a lot of 14 inch laptops doesn't come with upgradable memory. So if you want to upgrade to, for example, 32 gigabytes down the line and want to be as future proof as possible, do look out for that. There are many 14 inch laptops that have soldered memory, so you can't upgrade. And you are more likely to have an upgradable RAM if you go for a powerful 15 inch laptop. How about the different use cases for the different kind of laptop sizes? I think this is where it becomes really interesting because choosing a laptop is actually about choosing what kind of use cases do you need it for and then applying that to your laptop purchase. If you are using your laptop mainly with an external monitor, for example, in a gaming setup or in an office setup, I really see no point in why you would need to go with an as large screen as possible. Now you can get a powerful laptop in a 14 inch form factor and you can carry it around as easy as possible. And then when you still plug it into your larger screen or screens, you will have a proper mobile setup turned into a proper desktop setup. But flipping it to the other side, if you are not using your laptop with an external screen most of the time, the extra real estate that you get from a 15 inch laptop will actually be pretty helpful in the long run. So if you mainly use your laptop on the go without an external monitor, I would probably go for a 15 inch laptop. If you are traveling a lot or always carrying your laptop around, you need to prioritize weight. 
and with weight that would be the total package of the laptop together with the power adapter to charge it up. Many of the 15 inch laptops can be charged with USB-C but this is not a given so make sure to look out for that. And if you get a lightweight laptop, like for example MSI Prestige 15, that can also be charged with USB-C, so you could get a smaller charger and still power it. You could have a really lightweight 15 inch laptop package. But you are more likely to get a lightweight complete package if you go for a 14 inch form factor. Another thing to consider if you travel a lot is the size that you consume off of a table. For example in a cafe or if you're in a plane or a train, a 15 inch laptop takes up much more space, although I've never found it intrusive to use a 15 inch laptop as I see it is when you're using a 17 inch laptop, for example on a small plane table where it becomes almost impossible. I could go on and on like this forever about different use cases and for me personally I use both a 15 and a 14 inch laptop for different use cases. Mainly when I'm working in my office, I'm always on a 14 inch laptop plugged into two other screens. But when I'm working at home, I'm using my 15 inch laptop because that has a more powerful GPU. And when I use it for video editing, I need that power of the GPU to be able to make the video editing process as smooth as possible. Do you have any other tips or ideas about choosing between a 14 inch laptop and a 15.6 inch laptop? Please let me know in the comment section below and I will make sure to join the discussion as much as I can. I'm W2Best, I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials and I will see you in the next video. Have a really nice day, bye bye!